My anxiety is chronic, but this ass is iconic. Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Hope you're all doing well. Today we've got a few news stories in the world of PC gaming. First up, we're going to be talking about Resident Evil Village, which has been cracked. And the crack actually fixes all the stuttering in the game, which has many people believing that it's obviously done something with Denuvo DRM, removing Denuvo and all that stuff. But that's actually not the case and the crack actually ends up causing a ton of other issues but you can actually still get the benefits of having the stuttering removed with a mod so we're going to kind of connect all the dots as far as that is concerned also fifa 22 which is going to have next gen graphical features on consoles has also now been confirmed to be on the stadia but the pc is being left out which we already knew the pc was being left out but it kind of makes no sense that the Stadia would get it and the PC wouldn't, since the Stadia is basically running the PC version over the network. Duh. And also, the new Forza Horizon 5 will feature ray-traced audio. So, let's get into the news, shall we? Did you just finish building a sweet gaming rig only to have this happen to you? Not to worry, because your CD key has you covered with Windows 10 Pro licenses for under $18. And if you head over there right now, you could save 20% off with my code JPD20 at checkout. You'll receive your key within seconds, and then just click the start button and type activate to find the Windows activation screen, and all you gotta do then is paste your code in. For more info as well as that coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. Let's start off with Resident Evil Village though. As I said at the start of the video, the game has now been cracked by the scene group uh, Empress. Empress is the uh, scene group which has cracked uh, Resident Evil Village. Uh, it took a few months as it was running one of the latest versions of Denuvo DRM, if not the latest version of Denuvo, as well as Capcom's anti-tamper tech, um, which is seemingly to be the actual culprit of stuttering issues, performance issues with Resident Evil uh, Village. The NFO files for the crack actually uh, list exactly why the game is no longer stuttering, and they say all in-game stutters, like the one from when you kill a zombie, are fixed because Capcom DRM's entry points are patched out, so most of the functions are never executed anymore. This results in a much smoother gaming experience, and there have been some videos posted online, thankfully, comparing them side by side with the Steam version on the left here and the non-DRM version on the right, or the Empress version on the right. Uh, and as you can see, the one on the left uh, stuttering a lot, and uh, the performance actually is different at times, even though he's pretty much just standing right there. Um, or early on, I saw, I was like, yeah, sometimes the frame rate's a little bit higher uh, on the, on the, uh, the cracked version versus the non-cracked version. But you'll also notice when you're watching this that, um, like, when he's... The, the woman is, is coming at him, she never actually grabs him on the non-DRM version of the game. She just kind of stands there in his face on the right side. Now, she should grab him like you're seeing on the Steam version on the left. That's what's supposed to happen, and a lot of stuttering actually occurs during this animation sequence. But the fact is, when the game is cracked, it messes up something with all anim with animations in the game where they're uh, essentially, they just... They just don't happen. Uh, so animations like that where someone's attacking you, where they're supposed to grab you and do something, it doesn't happen in the cracked version. And I've also read that things like parrying, blocking, and kicking are also messed up with the cracked version of the game and do not work. And those are obviously uh, even way bigger issues than the animations of like a, a zombie grabbing you or something, as those are potentially game-breaking if you can't use certain elements of the game, like blocking or kicking a zombie or something like that. So... Yeah, those issues honestly would make it so like the cracked version is pretty much unplayable or much more difficult, I should say, uh, to, to play if actual gameplay elements uh, are, you know, no longer there. Thankfully, though, there's actually a mod that fixes the frame rate issues and the stuttering on the legitimate Steam version of the game without having to crack it, and then you still get to keep all the animations and stuff like that without causing any issues. And I'm going to have a uh, one-tab link for all the sources down in the description, and that will include a link to this mod right here, um, which does, which has quite a few things, actually. It's a hell of a mod, it sounds like, and I've just found out about it, so it's pretty good. Uh, it's got FOV slider, vignette disabler, uh, free cam, uh, flashlight, and more in the remod framework from, I believe, Prey Dog. Yeah, the author is Prey Dog. It's a seems like it's a team of guys or team of people working on it and one of the ish one of the things in the f features list as you can see is that performance stutters and fixes killing enemies taking damage and stuff like that crash fixes are all part of the uh, the mod and the person that did the previous video 
actually did a follow-up where they did the Empress version of the game, the Steam version, and then the Steam version with the remod, uh, the Resident Evil mod framework uh, mod, the one we were just talking about. And, you know, as you'll see, the stuttering is gone in that version as well, but the animations are still there. So, the big takeaway, the TLDR of it all is... If you want to play Resident Evil Village or Resident Evil 8 and have the best experience possible, it would seem that playing the Steam version with the mod would be the way to go and not the Empress uh, cracked version, unless, you know, you can't get the Steam version for whatever reason or you just don't want to pay for it. Um, that's your decision. But honestly, if you're just looking for the best way to play the game, it seems like actually owning the game and using the mod would be the way to go. So really good info and stuff like that. Had to kind of jump down a few different rabbit holes here uh, to pull together this information. So hope you guys appreciate it. But yeah, check out that mod for sure. As I said, one tab link in the description for all the sources. It'll be um, bundled into that, into that link that has all the links for the sources in it. All right, next up, FIFA 22. This We already knew this game was going to have next-gen graphics features that were going to be on console only and not on the PC. And to be honest, um, not really surprised about that at all because the same thing happened with the last generation of consoles uh, when the Xbox One and PS4 came out. Um, I believe it was only for one year. So the year those systems came out, um, the new versions of like FIFA and Madden had some graphical enhancements, better textures, feature, better lighting, shadows, grass, blah, 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 that were in the next gen console versions of the game. But the PC got kind of shafted on it and we had to wait an additional year until those were brought into the PC version, which is, you know, I, I understand the consoles are way more important to EA than PC will ever be. Um, but, you know, the fact that Stadia is getting it really doesn't make any sense at all in my head. Like, why would the Stadia get next-gen features but not PC? The Stadia is basically just a little streaming box that is connected to a network, and then it, the game is basically being played on a server somewhere, and it's running on a essentially what is a PC, and then streamed to your Stadia device so why would they not put that version on the PC too if it's already been developed enough to run on a PC and then be streamed to Stadia devices? It just seems like it just doesn't make any sense to me, honestly. And also, honestly, I'm a little bit glad about it because now I just won't buy this game. Uh, I was a little bit on the fence, honestly, uh, but I was hoping to play FIFA and Madden with, you know, ray tracing and stuff, probably actually on the PS5. Um, but I'm, I'm probably going to just skip it all together. Uh, I don't really like what EA is doing here with, with, with to the PC, even though I probably wouldn't have played these games on PC anyway, and I could play the next-gen version on PS5. I just don't really want to because of their whole ultimate team microtransaction-laden bullshit and the constant laziness with the annual releases of things like Madden and FIFA and, you know, basically just paying $60 for a roster update, which I've been doing for over 20 years now, uh, especially with Madden, buying those games every single year. And there, in the past few years, it's just been getting worse and worse, where it's literally just a roster update and, like, a new menu, a little bit of a new menu. Even some of the menus have been getting reused. They've been, even during, uh, like, celebrations and stuff like that, you'll see, like, the wrong year on the wall because they didn't redo the graphic for that. It's like, like, are you kidding me? with this shit, and now the Stadia gets next-gen, but not PC, they can go fuck themselves. <laughs> EA can literally tongue my taint. Um, even though, I, like I said, even though I can play this game on PS5, FIFA or Madden, I'm not going to do it. Skipping it this year, you know, let's see what they bring to the table this year and next year, and uh, maybe if they decide to actually make a new fucking game, then maybe some point down the road I will pick one up, because I still enjoy the gameplay of FIFA and Madden titles, but EA just doesn't deserve a single cent from us for these EA sports titles that are just so lazy and just have gotten worse. And now the PC gets shafted. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. Sorry, EA. But, sorry, not sorry, EA. But you're not getting my 60 or, well, probably $70 this year. I'm sure it's going to be 70 bucks. They can, they can go fucking sit on one. Next up and last but certainly not least, Forza Horizon 5 has been confirmed to be using ray traced audio. And yeah, I still have my I lost my voice a little bit over the weekend uh, yelling at the England Italy match, which I'm not very happy about. I'm not going to get into it. I have a lot of bad things to say about the penalty kicks on that game. Uh, but ray traced audio for uh, Forza Horizon 5. Now we first saw this brought up, I'd say about February, March of last year. Uh, when they announced the new Xbox console, the Xbox Series X and Series S, uh, to have ray traced audio, which sounds kind of gimmicky and not real because ray tracing is really for images 
Um, but it sounds like they're going to be doing something similar to ray tracing. Um, but to quote them, they did a developer blog uh, the other day, and they were asked, does ray tracing affect anything audio-wise as well as visual? And Playground Games, the developer behind Forza Horizon 5, said, yeah, it does. Uh, so we have taken ray tracing, and we are using it throughout the world. So actually, we're sending out ray traces to detect walls, buildings, and ceilings as well, which is pretty cool. Um, to have the, you know, dynamic audio basically being rendered in real time and stuff. But to call it ray tracing, I think is maybe a little bit of a leap. I could be wrong about that. But uh, it still sounds like a very cool feature and effect nonetheless. As it was described last year for the Xbox over on Notebook Check, it said that ray traced audio will probably be similar to ray tracing as far as 3D positioning goes. This could mean that the sound processing will happen dynamically and will be correlated to other sounds and objects in a 3D environment, just like ray tracing improves lighting, shadows, and reflections on an object as related to everything else in the environment. So that sounds like a, a much more accurate description as the game will dynamically render the sound to you based on what's currently happening and the walls and stuff around you. Like if you've ever driven on a highway and you've got a Jersey barrier next to you and if you're going really fast, you'll it'll have a sound and then if the barrier is gone for a second, the audio, you, you'll hear it'll change. If you go through a tunnel, it sounds different than not being in a tunnel. So that kind of stuff could sound very realistic, uh, especially in a, in a driving game where the audio is changing constantly. So that's very exciting to see. I would like to see something like this uh, brought into other games as well, maybe like a new Battlefield or Call of Duty title, and having more accurate uh, 3D positioning for audio could be could be quite a game changer in competitive games. So that's something I'm definitely excited to uh, to try out, as I don't think we've seen it in any games yet. If I if I ha if we have and I am unaware of them, please let me know down in the uh, comments below because I would like to. Uh, go experience it and try it out. Even, even if it's a game I may have already played and didn't even know about it, maybe just thought it was good audio. I'd like to do a little more experimentation with it, uh, as I definitely will when this game comes out and kind of try it out and see how, how realistic the sound is. But that is all I have got for you guys today. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to go ahead and leave a thumbs up on it. Subscribe if you're not already. All that good stuff, and I will catch you next time for another video.